Okay, what's up everyone? Today I'm here at the fitness corner because gyms are closed in Singapore, unfortunately. But today we'll be starting on my first day of calisthenics and today I'll be doing a push sort of workout. We'll be working on the chest, uh, the shoulders and the triceps, okay? So that's my push workout. And I'm really gonna try to cater this workout for all levels, okay? So try to stick with me even if you're a beginner or you're at the same level of me. And this workout is going to be a little bit biased towards bodybuilding styles uh, of workout because as you know, I really enjoy bodybuilding. So without further ado, let's head straight into it, starting first with the warm-ups. Okay, so one thing about calisthenics that really intimidates me is that when I get to the fitness corner or wherever I'm doing my calisthenics, I feel like I have to jump straight into the workout and I don't have like uh, cables to you know really try to hone in that mind muscle connection and being a bodybuilder that's like everything to me so uh, starting out here we're gonna start with some warm-ups that will help us to hone in some of that mind muscle connection and I'm sorry if the the sound is a bit noisy because this is really near the roadside but uh, we hope I hope that you know this uh, isn't that bad okay so we're gonna start out with the first warm-up which is uh, activation drill for our chest and I, I've seen this uh, online and it really works uh, very well for me so what we do is you find a solid surface you want to stick out your arm, um, push against a solid surface on the inner side of your arm with your arm straight like this, with your chest up, so make sure you have your chest up like this because if it's flat like this, you're going to actually end up activating your shoulders here. As you can see, it's activated here, it's relaxed and then this is activated. So that's not what you want. Okay, we want to have chest up, going here and push. So I'm pushing in squeezing the pack, feeling that my muscle connection and holding for about 10 seconds and feeling that squeeze there and then changing to the other side and what you can do is really change up the angle of this squeezing as well so I'm feeling my upper chest now you can see it firing here now I'll go down and I can feel my lower chest, which is right here, activating. Okay, the next thing that I do is to mimic some sort of chest press uh, with any sort of surface. And I'll usually do it on a high surface because, you know, physics. So the higher that your body is, it's going to be less resistance. So I can start off with something like this, which is basically a uh, inclined pull-up bar that is around um, hip level, okay? So I'll be doing a motion. So I'll be doing a motion that helps me to activate my chest. So if I'll do a dumbbell press, it will look something like this: chest up, press, squeeze, like this. So when it comes to my calisthenics movements, I want to try to recreate that as well. So I'm going to put my arms here, same width as if I were to hold a dumbbell, coming down to stretch the chest, and coming up. From here, this is the important part. When you're about halfway through, you want to be driving your elbows inwards and squeezing okay so what am I trying to say here the difference is a lot of people when they're doing the calisthenics what they do is just go through the motion so from here push up down here push up all right that's really not one what we want to achieve here okay we want to do this right so as you're doing your push-ups on this bar or whatever surface you're doing it on you want to try to push and then squeeze bring your elbows in squeeze so the difference between this and a dumbbell is that you can't actually bring your hands closer but your elbows can kind of go closer and you can see my chest squeezing like this. You really want to do that as you can. So you won't feel it from here to here but as you're going from halfway which is around here, squeezing the chest consciously, coming down, stretch, squeeze, down. All right. And what I find useful is to really imagine it like a dumbbell press. And if you've seen my other videos when I'm doing my dumbbell press, I'm really imagining bringing my elbows close like this and squeeze. I'm really exaggerating the movement here because this is not how it looks like, but you want to get these two parts of your elbows, of your hands, of your arms close and squeeze. All right. So these two main warm-ups you can throw in whatever other warm-ups. If you have bands, you can do some rotations and all that. But this is good enough for me. So we're gonna, let's head to the first exercise. So beginners, uh, if you're doing this uh, workout, 
you want to skip the first exercise or I'll actually show you a slightly easier version of this first exercise so let's head straight into it okay so our first exercise will of course be some chest dips okay this is my favorite mass building movement because you can really load up with a lot of I mean your full body weight and if you're really up to it you can put on your, a backpack as well and add on some weight to this exercise so this exercise kind of trains the meaty part of your chest which is here all right and you really can't target the upper parts of your chest very well with this exercise but essentially because your chest fibers run in this direction so when your arms go across your body like this you're actually targeting these parts of the chest really the the fleshy part of the chest that you really want to grow of course um, so I mean I don't really need to demo this exercise because a lot of you guys have seen it but anyway I'll show it to you guys and maybe I'll put a voice over over it as I'm doing it so it's not so weird okay so for this exercise the first thing that I'm going to focus on is actually getting my body posture and what I mean is my shoulder girdle in the correct position. So what I'm trying to do is really trying to shrug back and squeeze my shoulder blades together and really puff up my chest. And the reason for doing this is because uh, very similar to a gym exercise where you do a, a dumbbell bench press or a barbell bench press, you want your shoulders to be behind your chest so that you are biased um, your chest fibers more when you are actually doing the exercise. So as you can see here, I'm having my shoulders pulled backwards and my chest pushed forwards and this is really going to help to help me feel that chest better and once I'm in that position then I'm going to push myself up to the starting point once I'm in this top position the next thing I'm thinking about is lowering myself down slowly but using my pectorals to do that and how do I know that I'm using my pectorals to do that when you're lowering your body down you should feel that stretch in the chest and when you're feeling that stretch it means that the tension is on the pectorals and that later on you are more likely to actually be able to use it to push yourself back up and squeeze that muscle so what am i thinking about when i'm trying to push my body back up i'm of course trying to squeeze the chest and what that means is that as you can see as i'm coming up um, I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm trying to push my elbows towards each other. Like I'm trying to push it and make them meet. And this is really going to facilitate that squeezing of the chest. And then the next thing to note is my body position. Where as you can see, I'm trying to lean forward. Because the more you lean forward, it's actually going to be easier to activate your chest. Whereas if you keep it upright as you're doing the dip, you're going to use a lot of shoulders and a lot of triceps. So in summary, you start with a good posture by rolling your shoulders back, keeping it squeezed backwards and exposing your chest. And then next, you're going to feel that stretch as you go down. And then as you come up, you want to consciously squeeze your chest as hard as you can. And you do this by pushing your elbows towards each other. Okay, so what are the common mistakes for this exercise? Okay, mistake number one, using too little of your meaty part of your chest, using too much of your shoulders all right, and your triceps. Okay, I see this very often, whether it's in the gym or in areas like this. And unfortunately, most of the time it happens mostly for girls, okay? And it's, um, the, the thing is because I think generally, uh, girls, if they start lifting weights, they will tend to bias their shoulders more before their chest development, okay? When, the way they do things if they uh, don't start up correctly. So, uh, what, how does this uh, shoulder and tricep focus dip look like? It's going to be very close in like this and you're going to see a lot of rotation around the shoulder here a lot of extension of the shoulder which means a lot of stretching at the shoulder okay, it's very easy to see from even from far away the difference is when you're doing a chest um, dip your arms are like this and you're going in once again very similarly to like what you, what you do for the dumbbell uh, kind of press but when you're doing the shoulder one it's going to look a lot like a close grip dumbbell press like this I mean, other than not being able to target your chest properly, the main problem is that you really, really set up your shoulder for some serious injury right there. So if you are someone who has been doing that so, uh, all this time, don't worry about it, don't sweat about it, but just really stop doing that because you can really set yourself up for really bad injuries on your shoulder. Because your shoulder, firstly, uh, if you're new to this exercise, isn't meant to take that much weight and you're really pushing it up against the acromion here, okay, which is this the bony part of your of your shoulders okay the second problem is that even if someone looks like they're doing it the right way which means their elbows are flat out slightly and they look like they're moving their chest but the activation is not there okay and this really comes down to mind muscle connection so try to do the warm-ups that i did just now and apart from that 
when gyms are open again, you really have to do some sort of activation drills to really hone in that mind-muscle connection. Uh, another problem is that if you can't activate your chest properly, it's because it's too heavy and you're, you're just not meant to be doing uh, dips straight away. So what you can do is, if you're a beginner, okay, is to take an uh, elastic band. Unfortunately, I don't have one with me, but you know those resistance bands? So you're going to put it across here like this. So imagine the band across, and you're going to come up, and you're going to put your knees over on top. So imagine the resistance band is underneath my knees. So now there's a force pushing me upwards. And that's going to help to assist the movement there, help you to feel the chest a little bit better. So what really helps me to feel this exercise is to imagine my arms here and if I'm pressing downwards, it's going this way, after straight, goes in. Very similar to what I did during the warm-ups, okay? You always want to focus on that in so that you can activate the chest. See? So this is the lower chest where you want to really squeeze that lower chest here. So you want to feel it along here. And if you're feeling it here, it means you're using too much of your shoulders. Okay, so as I was saying before, the part that you really want to target for your chest is right here. So if you squeeze like this, then you activate your chest. As you can see, lots of chest activation. But if you rotate around the arm, can you see there is shoulder activation? And you see my chest activating all. Oh, it literally looks the same. Okay, so this is the problem for most people when they're doing their dips. So as a progression to dips, I really don't recommend a bench dips. So if you guys know what bench dips are, basically you have a bench behind you and then you kind of do this. Because even as I'm doing the movement now, you can see that the part that's really being worked is the shoulder and it feels so uncomfortable. Like I can't do it without feeling, uh, without feeling pain on my shoulder. So I really don't recommend it for anyone and unfortunately it's another overused exercise that I see because, and yet there are so many better variations to train your shoulders and your chest so just try to avoid that in my opinion okay now that we're done with the dips the next exercise will be push-ups so these push-ups are gonna help target the rest of your chest remember I said just now how uh, dips really target the meaty part of the lower chest so now you're gonna be able to target more of this part of the chest and so and that really depends on how you do your push-ups. So once again, if you're doing it with your arms closed in like this, and you're doing a lot of this, which I once again see so many people do, and it really annoys me sometimes. And I think that's because uh, in army, most guys are taught to do it like this. Because if you do this, then they call it chicken winging it. Okay, but that's really not a problem. So it's a problem when you're, you're keeping it so close, because all you're doing is you're gonna strain your shoulders and you're gonna work your triceps. So if you're building your triceps, that's no problem. But if you're here, we are really targeting our chest first. Uh, I usually go from chest, shoulders, then triceps. So when we're doing chest, we want to keep our arms somewhere between um, 80 degrees. So this is 90 degrees. So this is 80 degrees all the way down to even 30 degrees, okay? And where you put your elbows uh, is going to affect which part of your chest that you're going to feel more. So the sweet spot for me is slight around 45 degrees. But when I do it this way, I feel a lot of uh, lower to mid chest. Okay, so if that's your target, then that's what you want to do. But if you want to feel more of upper chest, you're going to have to be a bit more flat out, maybe around 70 degrees, and you're going to be able to do this, you see? If I come in close like this, chest up, it's not really targeting here, but if I come in here, I can really squeeze the upper chest like that. Okay, so it really depends on what you want to do. Um, normal push-ups are kind of easy if it's without uh, weights. Okay, so I'm going to do some decline push-ups, which I'm going to show you in a second. And the decline push-ups are going to bias your shoulders and the upper chest a little bit more. Uh, but you can also make normal push-ups without weights really difficult. And I'm also going to show you one set of those and how um, that technique really makes it much more difficult, okay? And it's really about time under tension, another bodybuilding concept. Okay, so let's hit straight into it. Okay, here we have an example of how I do most of my push-ups. And as you can see, my elbow is at a nice 45 degrees position. And I really like this position because it's a perfect middle ground for me that my arms are far enough apart that I get a nice stretch on the chest and near enough such that I get a nice squeeze. Okay, because you have to realize that it is actually a trade-off. When your arms are far apart, they can't come close together and you can't squeeze your chest. So you have to find that sweet spot for yourself. And you also have to know what your target is. 
Also take note the tempo here where I'm taking about slightly less than a second down and then about a second up as well. And I always do my push-ups at this rate because this helps me to feel my chest the best. Now how do we make normal push-ups very hard? As you can see here, what I just did was a very slow eccentric which means I slowly lower myself down, really feeling that stretch on the chest and then coming up and coming up only by squeezing nothing but the chest. And you can see that intense, intense squeeze here is really coming through the striations in the middle of the chest. And if you really want to get that striated physique, it's really so important to do your reps like this because it's going to help you to activate every single muscle fiber in your chest. With these kind of sets, I'm not too concerned about how many reps I'm doing. It's about the quality of each rep. And for me, generally, I can definitely do only less than 20 of these before my chest is completely fatigued. And you can see I'm really struggling to get every single one. So if you're doing your push-ups like this, look, do you see any chest activation at all? No, but I'm still doing the motion, okay? If you're doing it the way that I do, or the bodybuilding way, check out how much chest activation you get. From here, look at that. Look at the difference. If you know how to activate a chest versus if you're someone who can do 100 of these, tell me which one will help you to develop your chest better. I think it's very obvious. Uh. And you know what? Actually, if you have like a support, like something like this, okay, um, it's actually, there's no, no shame for doing push-ups there because what I really like about something like, like that structure, when you can hold both sides of it, I feel like it's almost like a gym machine where you can really, you see, can really squeeze versus when you're on the floor, sometimes when your hands are this way, you don't really feel the weight as much as when your hands are this way with the weight in your palm like this. So you can really do the workout on this thingy as well. And I'm going to show you one set. So here I'm doing the push-up on an incline bench. And even though it's an incline bench and technically it's easier to do the push-up, but as you can see, I'm really focusing on that squeezing. I'm trying to drive that elbow towards each other and squeezing that chest, making every single striation on the chest pop out. And this is really important because if you want to target your chest, then you have to do this. Okay, so if you've never even done a single push-up in your life, which is totally fine by the way, and you want to start doing push-ups, where should you start? Well, of course, remember that warm-up I showed you at the start where I did push-ups on a higher surface you can totally start there, okay? Just use the usual physics things. So if you're on a pole like this, okay? You're holding on to a high surface. Remember that the further back you stand, the... Okay, basically, you st the higher your body is, like this, um, the easier it is. And then you go lower, lower, lower. Assuming this is where your hands are, it's harder, okay? So... You just do this and eventually you get to a flat push-up and then you'll be doing it probably probably more correct than most people do because a lot of people jump into that flat push-up with all that bad form that I just showed you guys. Okay, now that we've done basically two exercises for chest, I'm going to move on to shoulders. And for shoulders, we're going to do a pike push-up. And I just don't really want to explain it to you because it's so hard to explain. So I'm just going to show you the video and explain it from there. Okay, so as you can see, because you're in an inverted position, this is going to put more stress on your shoulders. Okay, you're almost doing a handstand if you will. Okay, but this is the easier version of it. Okay, so you're going to progress from having this kind of push-ups to one that is on a higher surface where you're going to elevate your feet and it's going to put even more weight onto your shoulders. Here I'm at the most difficult progression of the exercise and my upper body is completely perpendicular to the ground. Okay, finally we're going to end off with some triceps and we're going to do some body weight skull crushers for this. Once again, it's easier to show you guys and explain so I'm just going to show you the clip of what I'm doing and talk over it. Okay, so just take a look at the exercise here. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm having my hands just slightly narrower than shoulder width apart. And then I'm bending my arm at the elbow uh, and pushing my body forward. And then basically to work the tricep is actually the part where you are straightening your arm. You're extending the arm and pushing it backwards. Pushing your whole body backwards. And it's kind of weird actually because technically you're not really working against gravity. And I guess the physics is a, a bit uh, a bit complicated here but in essence you're not really working against gravity and you're more of 
pushing yourself into the bar and then you're using your arms to push yourself away from the bar. So you really have to get a feel for this yourself. Um, one main thing is that um, your elbows might feel a little bit uncomfortable at first and the way to overcome that is to just find a better grip width um, or you should warm up your elbows uh, more before you do this exercise. This is very much like a skull crusher in a gym and if you haven't done one um, from the name you already know that it's kind of a dangerous exercise And but the main danger is not that your skull is going to be crushed but is that you might get some tricep tendonitis and speaking from someone who has done this exercise like about three days ago my entire tricep is still insanely sore so if you do it right you're going to get great benefits from it so there you have it guys as you can see from my messy hair and the decent pump that i'm getting from this workout it's going to get you get you a really nice full workout for all your pushing muscles okay and if you find this too much of a workout if you're a first timer just start with any one of them you could start with a uh, assisted dip you could start with a push-up a pipe push-up or even the triceps uh, or skull crushers okay so this workout really can cater to all levels from beginners to even advanced uh, people so give this workout a try and if you find that you know you don't like a certain thing or two and you want to know how to tweak it you can always drop me a dm on my instagram which i will link down below in the description okay guys so i hope that you guys found this really useful this is going to be my push workout uh, at least one day of the six days that i will do so on another day i'll be doing a slightly different workout and i might feature it on this channel so stay tuned okay guys so i hope to see you guys in the next one bye bye Okay, so this is actually a little blooper from um, my workout. So basically, this is me trying to do some sort of a, I don't even know, like some sort of planche and um, failing at it as you can see. So at this point, I'm at the end of my workout and I'm just trying to get a thumbnail in uh, for YouTube. But I, I'm really adamant about getting it. As you can see here, I finally find a nice balance and...